Energy media readers, uh, you know that uh, I'm a big fan of electric cars, electric electrification of transportation in general, and I'm very interested in new technologies as they as they come out. But today we're going to be talking about a slightly different twist on this. Uh, we'll be speaking to Kevin Sharp of New Electric in Ireland, whose company since 2007 has been converting internal combustion engine cars to electric cars. So welcome to the interview, Ke Kevin. Thank you, it's great to be here. Now, I think this is a great idea and I'm very interested to learn about your company. So, you know, how did it start and what, what exactly did you do? Well, the, the, the two, two founders, myself and Anne Kloppenborg, um, started basically on parallel paths. So he's based in the Netherlands, I was based in the UK at that time. And we were both interested in converting, car, well, driving electric cars fundamentally. But at that point, obviously, they were either didn't exist or the price point was such that they were just unattainable for us. So we both um, started looking at, um, you know, how one might actually go about building a car. And this was very early. So this is 2007, 2008. And we were really looking at DC motors and lead acid batteries. You know, it was very cool. So... Um, Anna did a lot of work. He was also really interested in boats. So he's, he's done a lot of work with electrification of boats. And um, I was at the same time as well in parallel with that, um, very busy with my other business. So I took a shortcut, which was to give Mr. Musk a, a huge amount of money. And uh, in, that was in 2008. I thought I'd lost it in 2009, but uh, fortunately in 2010, he delivered a roadster to me. And that's really where my sort of journey began in terms of electrification. In parallel though, uh, Anne and I were working independently. Um, he was doing a lot of work with uh, basically converting, you know, one-off cars. And um, I was doing a lot of work as well with just sort of supporting uh, what was going on and trying to nurture really a whole sort of industry based around particularly open source. Um, because I felt that the way of, of sort of, you know, taking this forward was to generate a, a group of people doing this, not just, you know, individuals. So tell me about your first car. I mean, uh, you know, what was it and how in the heck did you get an electric motor into it? Well, my, I, I've had a whole series of different cars, um, most of which, to be honest, have never been completed. Uh, one of the problems with being in development is that you just continuously... Um, you know, evolve vehicles. So the, the oldest vehicle that I've been working on, and it's still ongoing today, is a 1967 uh, VW split screen bus. Um, now that's actually on its third iteration. So to begin with, that had an AC motor and some Chinese batteries in it, lithium batteries. Then it went, its second iteration was a Nissan Leaf um, drivetrain with a Nissan Leaf, well, two Nissan Leaf battery packs in it. And currently today, it has a Tesla Model S motor in it and, uh, and a, um, three quarters of a P100 Tesla pack in it as well. So how difficult is it to engineer a electric motor or a drivetrain and battery pack and all the wiring and the software management system and all the stuff that goes into making an electric car, how difficult is it to put that into an older vehicle? Uh, the challenges really are mo much more mechanical, certainly today. You know, today we're at the point where there's almost an unlimited amount of OEM parts available. Uh, we can buy battery packs, motors, etc in bulk, you know, um, uh, very large numbers. Um, so there's no problem with supply. Uh, the issue really has been whether or certainly on an older vehicle is, is how you shoehorn that into the vehicle. And some vehicles are easier than others. Um, we, so for instance, the bus is a very simple uh, conversion simply because you can actually put certainly one of the smaller Tesla motors in will go in where the internal combustion engine was. And then there's enough because of the, the sort of format of the chassis on the bus, it's very easy to fit batteries beneath the floor of that. Um, so that's a very good scenario. Um, 
having said that, I mean, certainly Anna has done vehicles right down to, you know, the two CB, tiny little vehicles. Um, but they are a lot more challenging because you do, you're, you're fighting for millimeters all the time. And, um, you know, that's, that's a challenge. But today we really, it's much easier today because not only because of the availability of parts, but also so much of it now has been um, reverse engineered and open source control solutions exist. And, um, you know, that's a big part of what we're, we're supporting and involved in. So what's the cost of converting a, let's say, a, a four-door compact car? Uh, you obviously you have different uh, models, mostly than we do here in North America. But let's say so, like a mid-sized a mid -size car and that might cost uh, $20,000, $30,000 in North America. Uh, what would the, the price tag be by the time you got finished electrifying? So I'll give you two, two examples just to give you a feel for this. Uh, we've just recently done a test vehicle, which is a BM. This is, you know, the high end of the, in terms of size. So a BMW 7 Series, you know, big two, 2.2 ton BMW. Uh, we managed to actually do that whole conversion for 500 euros. So about $500 US. That has about 37 kilowatt hours of battery um, and is um, so around 120 mile of range roughly. Now, okay, hang on a second. I have to interrupt you, Kevin. Did yeah. I hear you correctly? Five hundred dollars? Absolutely. How now, do you do with that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how do we do that? Well, the skill, the 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 Firstly, there's no labour in that, so you have to, you know, so and that's a huge variable. So we try not to. We usually don't include labour in terms of how much it costs, but of in terms of time, so that people can factor in roughly what they're they're doing. Um, so that's very much, you know, was based on um, acquiring parts over time, obviously very aggressive parts, you know, lots of breaker parts primarily, you know, going to a breaker who doesn't know what they have, getting, you know, getting the parts to do that. Um, and interestingly enough, one of the things that we've done a lot of work on recently and is in that BMW 7 series is we're repurposing um, what, what we would normally call the transmission from a hybrid from a Lexus hybrid. Well, if you looked at some uh, hybrid uh, transmission from a Lexus, say a GS450, sort of, you know, range car, that actually has two motors inside it and they're capable of 300 horsepower. Now, typically you can pick those up for around three, 400 euros, something of that sort. So by repurposing that and combining it with a, uh, a Toyota Prius inverter, again, available for 100, 200 euros. You can begin to get very, you know, um, all of the sort of key components uh, at very low cost. And how long would it take you to do the conversion? How many hours of labor are, are actually involved? Well, again, this is a really, it's, it's shifting. Historically, you know, I mean, most people don't even account it. It's a long time. It's a great period of time. Um, because you know, you're not, you're not, you're doing one offs. Um, usually as I say, you're shoehorning them in, etc. But we have a target This, for instance, we've, we've just recently acquired a, a Lexus GS450 and we're doing that conversion simply, um, by removing the internal combustion engine. Um, and then actually just filling space where the internal combustion engine is with, with batteries. Now we think we can get to the point where you can do that in a day. And the key to that is having basically drop in bolt in parts. Now, obviously if the, if you're using say an existing hybrid, and then this could be something like a Prius or like say Lexus or um, a Honda, then a vast amount of the work that you would normally do has already been done. You know, um, I mean, it's literally in the Lexus case, it's, it's take the internal combustion engine out. Uh, you then fit a blanking plate over where the, the gearbox, and then you've got this huge void that used to have the engine in it. Um, so is, now, are, sorry. Are, yeah. Is your, is your company in the business of, uh, are you doing one-offs all the time? Is that the, what you've done? And is that the intent going forward? Or are you getting to the point where you have 
you know, a couple of models of SUVs and, and cars and so on, and sure. you'll just do this more of a, an assembly line. Sure. Um, well, we're actually a group of five companies in, in total. New Electric has, a, is, has five companies. Four of them are based in the Netherlands. And within that group, we have a company that specializes on marine solutions. So we do a lot of, we do 100 ton tugs, for instance, and we do a lot of the pleasure craft. Um, so if you see an electric pleasure craft in, in, on the canals of Amsterdam, uh, we're likely to have been involved in that. We have another um, company that's focused on um, uh, fleet conversion. So we're doing, for instance, a, a fleet of ambulances at the moment. Um, and then we have another company that focuses on trucks and buses. So, um, and, and also I think it's important to say, um, you know, we do both battery and hydrogen solutions. So we don't distinguish between them. It's, it's down to the requirements of the, of the customer. Now, what we do here in Ireland, though, is that we're focused on um, supporting open source and effectively, this is run as a not-for-profit, this part of the business. So both Anna and myself have contributed a lot historically to open source, but we wanted to sort of formalize that and support the community and bring into the community for, for things. For instance, um, we're working on bulk buys of batteries to make available to the community um, and fuel cells, for example. So things which if you were doing one-offs would be very difficult. Is, the, is there a big movement in, uh, in Europe, uh, particularly in Ireland and Netherlands and so on, uh, you know, lots of demand for this kind, these kinds of conversions, lots of interest among customers, lots of interest among say commercial customers, you know, like you know, buses and ambulances. So is the interest now at the point where this is a, a commercial, you know, could be a commercial entity and, and uh, you know, be really run as a, as a profitable, a profitable business. Yes, I mean, the, the one-off conversions, I mean, which is where we began, of course, um, that's, that's very difficult to, to run um, profitably unless you're charging very high-end numbers. And you'll find, you know, if you look around the internet, you'll see high-end Porsches and Ferraris and, you know, but that's very big money. And, and we do, you know, I mean, we, we occasionally do one-off cars for specials, but you know, they're, they're the hundred, $150,000 type conversions, you know? Um, so there is a business there, but it's not the business that we're primarily interested in. We're really interested in fleets. So in the Marine industry, for instance, repowering is, is common. You very, very rarely will, um, um, you know, scrap a hull once it's been made. I mean, hulls go on for 100, 150 years often. So they get, you know, it's normal that you repower them over their life. Um, in the same way that a lot of commercial vehicles are very specialized for function. So um, again, you know, if you're running a fleet of, um, I mean, tow trucks is a good one. You know, to, they're, they tend to be very bespoke and, um, so you might have a, a fleet operator that comes to you and wants to electrify their fleet, usually driven off, you know, demands of the city. So in Amsterdam, for instance, we're going, uh, we're removing all internal combustion engines. So, um, you know, so there's a separate business there and that is very scalable. You know, that's a great, obviously you can tool up then, you know, if you're, if you're doing multiple conversions. So, when we do the, the ambulance fleet, for instance, that we're doing, they're identical vehicles. So, you know, we can tool up, we can do that, and that's re repetitive. With the business in Ireland, which is, it's at the moment very much one-offs, you know, um, and we got a lot of enthusiasts that are involved in this. But our plan is to really focus on a relatively small number of vehicles uh, for instance, the Toyota Prius is in our sites um, because they're available at very low cost and will make a very good conversion um, candidate. So last, last question, uh, Kevin, uh, what actually is driving this? Uh, you, know, you mentioned the tow trucks in, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, is, yep. it, is it government policy, you know, national governments, regional governments, city governments, wanting to uh, cut down on, on emissions and pollution and so on. Is that what's doing it or is there something else? 
Yes, it's, it's primarily just a need to, to air, air quality is, is an overriding issue for us. Um, and um, yeah, and, and you know, many European cities are taking that very seriously. And um, I think that's the main driver. Um, I mean, we have, for instance, and, and it's needed, you know, if you, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Amsterdam, but if you go and sit on the canal boats whilst it's lovely, they're all diesel, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we have to do something about that. And, and that's the driver. Kevin, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep track of your company. And I'm very interested to see what you do in the future. Good luck. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.